Good evening, everybody. Today we have amongst us the Ikatan Indonesia Chair, Dr. Kartika Antono, MM89, and AAA Awardee 2019. She will be talking about the forestry business in Indonesia. Welcome, Kartika. Over to you. Thank you, Nikhil. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I see Koratex there. And uh, hi. Uh, I, I want to start by uh, uh, presenting some uh, slides. And after that, we can continue with uh, this uh, question and answer. Okay, uh, my topic today is the, uh, to sustain agroforestry business in current crisis in Indonesia. Um, as we all know that uh, since the COVID-19 happened, it was announced in Indonesia early March. Up to now, um, most of the corporation are working from home, but uh, in the forestry side, um, life is, like not normal because in some of the forestry uh, they don't experience this uh, spreading of the virus this is uh, very uh, good for for the people outside the uh, forestry area however uh, since uh, movement of the people will be very big uh, this month during the ramadan uh, month we will celebrate muslim a new year on the 24th and 25th of uh, this month. Uh, so actually government already uh, make a regulation that people cannot uh, go to the hometown, but you know, some people is still uh, trying to uh, override this regulation. My first slide is, uh, okay. Let me, yes. Um, this is the uh, Indonesian forestry area. I take the information as of 2017 in 1,000 hectares. Um, if we see, uh, Indonesia has about 17,000 island, 17,504 island all over the, uh, the country. And if we see here, forestry area is uh, consists of several um, category. Firstly, we have uh, primary forest. Then we have secondary forest. Primary forest means that the original virgin forest that not yet been touched by any uh, industry. Then we have secondary forest. It means that uh, the forest has been um, explored few decades ago, then currently uh, become a secondary forest and is also available for uh, industrial uh, forestry. The third category is industrial forestry, means that, uh, that for the corporation that license was issued to develop this forestry to become industrial forestry. Besides that, we still have non-forest. Non-forest means uh, that the area under the Minister of Agriculture, which is um, uh, considering uh, like uh, mostly for farmers. If we look at this um, in the column side, we see several um, category. Firstly, is uh, we call it conservation forest because every uh, forestry has to uh, allocate uh, area for conservation. Minimum 10% of the area should be uh, allocated for conservation. Then we have also protected forest. Protected forest is the area that it cannot be uh, explored for any reason, but this is actually um, uh, allocated for uh, carbon uh, conservation. And then thirdly, we have the uh, limited protection forest. 
uh, this one is a uh, area that have some specialty in in the uh, in term of uh, trees and also some diversity in the uh, inside the forestry my uh, main point is the uh, column called hsp hsp mean production forest which is in indonesia we have uh, 29 million hectares uh, license has been issued for industrial forestry the total area of the forestry is about uh, uh, totally is about 107 uh, million hectares If we look at the forestry land, uh, it consists of uh, some, uh, almost half is the still uh, forestry, which is 93.95 93 million, and the rest are non-forest area. Forest area consists of 45% is still in the form of forest, and 18.4% is non-forest, means that some logs has been taken mostly by community, and some illegal lockers are still happen in the country. This one is maybe quite small to see. Uh, this area is to, to show how many percentage of the forestry area in each province. Indonesia is consists of 34 provinces uh, all over the country. If we look at the prospect of agroforestry species in Indonesia, Indonesia has 17,000, as I mentioned earlier, uh, 17,054 islands. And the coastal line is 99,093 kilometers, one of the longest coastal line uh, worldwide. With the population of 269.6 million as of uh, 2020, but Indonesia still imports some uh, basic food like rice, soybean, corn, and sugar. This shows that um, this import substitution is, can be uh, developed in the forestry area um, so that Indonesia can have a sustained uh, food security for the people. The other prospect is uh, for the agroforestry, we call it intercropping to increase the yield of the land. Intercropping means that we plant a uh, food crop in the middle of the uh, forestry, industrial forestry area, which is mostly uh, planted by uh, wood-based uh, crop. For instance, for the, uh, for the rubber plantation, the distance of uh, trees is like uh, six meters times uh, nine meters. So beside uh, these uh, uh, trees, people can plant uh, in the crop, which is mostly the food crops in the middle of, the, of, of this uh, uh, plantation. However, this intercrop is only available for the first uh, two, three years, because otherwise when the trees are already uh, covered, then the sunlight cannot enter this intercrop area. Most of the intercropping in the industrial forestry are food crops. Food crops, uh, some food crop is like a soybean, a corn, and some uh, uh, rice, they plant rice. And in the very dry area, we also plant a sorghum. We also have the prospect of the agroforestry is the availability of non-productive land. Non-productive land means that um, the license hasn't been issued to any corporation. So it's like open uh, land owned by government but it's not yet productive because there is uh, no license issued for that land. So people can just uh, go to the forest and take the logs. This is not good for the environmental because it can cause uh, environmental damage like uh, flooding, 
and also uh, burning and uh, fire burn is a very bad uh, condition that happened last year. Uh, some area has been um, categorized like a, a hot area and we have to be very careful with, the, with this uh, forest burning. And we also have huge number of human resources because uh, with the huge population of Indonesia, uh, human resources is uh, developed in every uh, part of the provinces and educated uh, human resources uh, getting uh, increasing in most of the provinces. And uh, lastly, for, uh, the prospect is the government support to develop the agroforestry. Uh, which is previous in previous years, agroforestry is uh, just a, a concept. But since last year, government issue regulation that allowed uh, corporation who hold license in industrial forestry to expand to uh, agroforestry concept, meaning that beside the wood crops in the forestry area. Uh, Corporation can plant uh, food crops in the middle. Yeah, the prospect of agroforestry in Indonesia is to reduce the transport costs by planting strategic food crop in its island. Because the distance of uh, the uh, western part of Indonesia to the eastern part, it's like a six hours flight. So if um, we have to distribute uh, these food crops from the western part to the eastern part is very costly. That's why there's a prospect in agroforestry to plan according to the uh, need of the people in its island. The other prospect of the agroforestry business in Indonesia is about the fertile, fertile uh, soil and most of the area has a very good uh, uh, soil. So its uh, cost to develop plantation is becoming uh, very competitive. Also good climate to plant most basic uh, food crops. As a comparison, if we look at the uh, acacia uh, wood, acacia trees, for instance, within uh, four and to five years, the diameter of these uh, uh, trees, it can reach more than 40 centimeters. That's why uh, pulp and paper industry in Indonesia become very uh, competitive uh, because of this um, uh, high growing uh, trees in, in the country. It's, if we compare to um, the other island, like, like at the Pacific Island, to grow acacia tree to get uh, 40 to 45 centimeters, uh, the diameters. It takes more than 10 years, some even almost 20 years, 18 to 20 years. But in Indonesia, less than five years, we can reach uh, at this uh, size of the uh, diameters. However, Indonesia also uh, facing challenges in surviving, surviving, for surviving the crisis. Firstly, is the capital intensive in scarcity of funding uh, availability. Just uh, industrial forestry business is very capital intensive, need a lot of capital, but uh, funding currently is not easy to find. Most of the banking is very selective to uh, release lending, even though the contract are there. Uh, this, therefore, we have uh, uh, some problem in this capital intensive industry. Secondly, is the availability of seedling. Some uh, nursery are not aggressive enough in this uh, crisis because uh, most of this uh, nursery is not focused enough to, to have uh, the the nursery develop uh, quite well because of the capital is also one of the challenges. And also the availability of planting materials and equipment which are mostly imported from 
uh, China, when uh, these uh, Chinese companies affected by the COVID-19, some uh, import are delayed. It's also this Im impact also in the agroforestry uh, business. The other things is to manage supply chain. Currently, with all this limitation of the logistic to transport, we have some um, challenges how to manage supply chains to be on time. Prior to the crisis, some of the plantation is still uh, can uh, lower the inventory, the cost of in the inventory by uh, having uh, just in time uh, concept. Uh, for the fertilizer and all the pesticide, fungicide and things. But now most of the industrial forestry business have to keep stock and this is uh, quite uh, costly in this uh, scarcity of funding uh, environment. The next uh, challenge is about the security. Security is one of the uh, uh, biggest challenge to protect the forestry area against illegal logging, against a theft that in going in the forestry area, especially for the food crops. Because uh, with this, in this uh, crisis, many people become jobless. And this one is a very, very uh, uh, hard to, to manage the situation in the remote area. Some strategies to sustain the business of agroforestry, firstly, is to manage cash flow. To manage cash flow, one of the strategy that are normally are being used is to plan a, a short a, a plan, plan, short plantation, a short cycle plantation. For instance, like a, a soybean, it's only 96 days we can uh, get the yield. A corn, also is a, a short period uh, of planting, we can help to manage gas flow. And also paddy. We have some uh, paddy crops that can be planted uh, in uh, dry season and some in um, rainy season. This one is can, this uh, short uh, term uh, crops can help to manage uh, the gas flow of the forestry business. Secondly, uh, is how to manage yield. To manage yield is how to increase uh, the yield so that um, the return of investment can be higher. Uh, for Like for a soybean, in the normal uh, business of so uh, soybean, one hectare only can produce uh, one and a half uh, tons. But in this um, a crisis, we try to uh, make this production more efficient by giving some um, input like a fertilizer and some growth stimulator that we can increase the yield up to uh, two tons and more for uh, one hectare. Thirdly, is to retain productivity because productivity is the key. Uh, to sustain the business. It's not easy to retain productivity in, the, in this crisis. Uh, however, uh, most corporations uh, try to manage, uh, even uh, some going to micromanage this, um, this business to see how to increase uh, productivity. One uh, method to increase productivity is uh, using precision farming, which is uh, we have to manage its input is going directly and efficiently to its plant. And also we have to reduce uh, some losses uh, in the plantation. The next uh, strategy is the creative supply chain. Supply chain is one of the uh, um, key that we have to manage to be uh, to be uh, survive in this uh, crisis, 
for instance, is the, uh, managing the transportation, where uh, the length of the transport become uh, longer because some area uh, they close uh, the road to avoid people moving from one side to the other side. This uh, can cause the transport uh, uh, transport time become um, longer. That's why we have to manage licenses and coordination with all the stakeholders to make sure that uh, supply chain are running well. The, the other strategy is the business partnership between uh, academic business and government. Because we have to find innovation and creative way how to survive in this crisis. So uh, most of the businesses develop the academic business and government in order to increase the productivity. And our government actually is very, uh, very responsive in this crisis. Through the industry association, this partnership can be developed uh, quite um, uh, rapidly and uh, the response from the government is also quite fast. In the uh, last part of my presentation, how is to moving ahead toward food security? Indonesian President uh, Joko Widodo uh, last uh, two days mentioned that uh, World uh, Health Organization um, has won uh, the food crisis, a famine that threatened the world. 135 million people are threatened with hunger or even worse than that. This is a very sad uh, statement. However, this warning is uh, very uh, relevant uh, for the industrial forestry business, especially to increase the agroforestry in order to have uh, food security for the nation. And to have this, some uh, corporation start having uh, collaboration with people surrounding the forestry so that uh, we can help them the social uh, uh, impact of this uh, crisis can be managed by partnership with the population surrounding the forestry area. By uh, this partnership means that People surrounding uh, forestry area, those who have uh, land, corporation help to give them seedling and give training and also give uh, uh, coaching to help them develop what they can plant in their uh, area. And some people that don't have a plantation area and they are jobless. So corporation try to give them a job to work for the uh, forestry area. But this uh, one is not easy because uh, training takes time. And most of the uh, people surrounding forestry area, not all are familiar with plantation because the young generation came back to the uh, rural area because they cannot uh, survive or they, they are hard to find job in the capital. So many of them have to be trained in order to get uh, use for uh, plantation activities. If I may um, uh, quote from the Professor Emeritus Peter Timmer about the food security in Indonesia, uh, current challenges and the long run outlook, probably the best that uh, can be done in the short run the next three to five years is to minimize policy damage to the interest for the poor while trying to improve the effectiveness of the programs, transferring resources directly to the poor. But in the long run, only way, the only way to sustain food security is through pro-poor pro -poor economic growth. And 
this principle actually has been uh, adopted by Indonesian uh, government that uh, many regulation pro poor economic growth has been in place. Like uh, President Joko Widodo has distributed um, many areas uh, for the community. One household can get up to two hectares land and then um, out of this two hectares land there are support from government for them to plant uh, food crops so that uh, they can um, uh, help to support the food security for the uh, nation. The last, my last slide is about the domestic demand uh, can be fulfilled locally. This is uh, one of the food security uh, program so that we can uh, substitute, um, we can substitute uh, importation of the basic food uh, for the people. And to fulfill the local domestic demand by local plantation, um, it still um, need several uh, years to go uh, so that this agroforestry can support this food security. And uh, lastly, uh, about the business yield in producing food for the nation, this agroforestry uh, can be utilized because the uh, forestry license uh, issued uh, for the corporation for 60 years and can be um, extended for another 30 years. So the one forestry license can be for 90 years. If we compare to the license for uh, plantation, like for palm oil that's issued by the Minister of Agriculture, there's only 35 years. So. Moving ahead toward the food security, agroforestry is one of the key for Indonesia to get the food security uh, for the nation. This is some picture for agroforestry that we uh, plant this uh, uh, soybean. This one is the uh, rubber plantation. So between the rubber, rubber trees, it plant the uh, food crop. This is corn. It's also some uh, plant pineapple, uh, soybean. Palm oil uh, can be plant surrounding the, uh, the forestry because in the forestry area is prohibited to palm palm oil. But uh, cocoa and then coconut, dragon fruit, uh, coffee, uh, paddy, and also this uh, sorghum. This is uh, stevia. Uh, can be planted as in the crop. This is uh, my last uh, slide. Uh, I uh, get back uh, to Nikhil for the uh, question and answers. Thank you, Kartika. Uh, Welcome. Natarajan, please go ahead. <coughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, hi, Kartika. Thanks so much uh, for your uh, wonderful uh, presentation. Um, see, uh, the question that I have is that uh, while you, uh, in Indonesia you are uh, doing uh, this work, I have a friend, a very close friend of mine uh, near to where I live, where in a very small area of land, uh, about an acre, he's been uh, doing uh, agroforestry. Uh, he discovered it himself. He tried uh, his hand over the past uh, two, three years, and he has been uh, fairly been successful. Do you, uh, and from what I uh, understand from him is that uh, this is the way to go, uh, because going forward, uh, food is going to be the, one of the key elements for the uh, uh, population uh, that is going to be uh, that is going to really require a lot, uh, you know, food is going to be a challenge. And uh, do you think this is a viable way forward for many of the countries or what, what do you see? Yes. Uh, I see that uh, like people have a small piece of land up to two hectares, some even uh, smaller than that. Uh, as long as uh, 
uh, the, the food crop that uh, they choose is right. But it's a very huge potential for uh, developing this agroforestry business. But the problem, uh -huh. one of the challenges is seedling. To get the high uh, quality of seedling, it has to be very selective. Because otherwise, uh, mm -hmm. the yield is not, uh, is not enough to cover the cost. And if we look at this, uh, like to plant uh, soybean, two hectares soybean, for instance, uh, the uh -huh. cost to plant uh, is not expensive. It's only uh, about uh, 16 to uh, 18 million rupiah. Mm -hmm. However, uh, if uh, they only have uh, two hectares with the yield of four tons, uh, four tons uh, a year, uh, it's not uh, feasible enough to, to sustain. That's why mm. we need collaboration with uh, other plantation and with the main holder of the, uh, uh, of the industrial forestry licenses. Right. So, Lord Rajan, is it answered? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you go to the next question. Maybe if time permitting, I'll uh, you follow can type it with this. Or, or you can type it in. Okay, sure. Ashwin, go ahead. Hey, Kartika. It's a pleasure to hear your uh, talk on the agroforestry aspect. And it uh, looks like uh, you also have some Indic origin to your name. Uh, so just notice that as well. Um, just um, one comment, um, which is on uh, the distribution of land and then um, an offer to help. Right. So the first one is uh, you mentioned that your government is uh, distributing about two hectares of land per family. Indonesia being such a populated country, uh, would that suffice? Because I guess all your forests would get wiped if you were to give that kind of land to every family. So is that every family or is that certain criteria to which uh, the government gives land to folks? Okay, uh, not to every family. It's just uh, for a certain criteria, meaning that uh, those who live in the uh, forestry area, it means that the status of the land are forestry but not yet issue a uh, license to corporation. Because okay. currently, uh, most of the land, uh, most of the license are issued to corporation. Okay. However, uh, the new uh, government, uh, President Joko Widodo, the second term of, the, of his, uh, he is in power, now, uh, now uh, distributing land, uh, two hectares land to uh, the people who live or who uh, have uh, plantation in the area that uh, the status of forestry, but not yet get the license. So this is like just giving certificate uh, to them. Okay. However, if the certificate they cannot survive, so need to have uh, a working capital as well. Okay, just a comment. Um, now, uh, since you have uh, kindly endeavored to explain that. Uh, I am actually, in fact, that's one of my presentations, which I did on the 17th of April. We do have a very powerful solution for agri products. would like to connect with you offline because it has big potential to jump the yield for farmers across Asia. So we, I'll, I'll take your uh, connect, connection details from Nikhil and then reach out to you separately with some of our results that we have already achieved. That's great. Thank you so much Good. for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Anybody has any query, any question? Kartika, I have a query. Uh, you have been in this uh, agroforestry business since how long? Uh-huh, okay. Uh, yes, I've been uh, in the plantation business um, since uh, 2009. Um, However, agroforestry is just a new concept that has uh, just developed in the uh, last uh, uh, four or five years. But the regulation that support this agroforestry uh, has been developed uh, since last three years. And last year is the most uh, supportive regulation uh, to, to promote this agroforestry. So, so before 2009, you were in the same field or you're doing something different for the Salim group? Because I mean, associated with the Salim group, right from the uh, 
Except to totally so, different. Totally I, different. Totally different. Uh, I used to work in automotive industry, and before that in IT, uh, but the, in in the same group in in within the Salim group. Then uh, I was assigned uh, to different kind of business, so, and yeah. I found my passion. Actually, I like this uh, forestry business because some of uh, of this aspect is uh, community development, which is um, this is my passion, how to help the community to grow. Excellent, excellent. Mr. Prerit Su. Yeah, thank you, Nikhil. Uh, uh, Dr. Intono, uh, it was interesting presentation. Thank you. Uh, I just had one query, uh, you know, of this agro forestry business. Uh, you also link up with, uh, you know, uh, companies dealing with paper, pulp, uh, you know, tire and all because See, some of the output which is coming from this forestry uh, has to, you know, align as a raw material to those industries. So if you can explain about the value chain, uh, uh, that will be helpful. And okay. what major changes are you observing over the years? Uh, since just Nikhil asked, uh, you know, since 2008 you are in this stream. So over the last 12 years, what uh, underlying currents you have seen and what might be anticipated uh, in the next five, seven years? Thank you. Okay, Mr. Su. Um, if I see uh, the value chain of this uh, uh, forestry business, uh, I used to work for, uh, I used to quit uh, two years from Salim and work for a pulp and paper industry. Um, I see that uh, this industrial forestry to support uh, pulp and paper industry is mostly uh, to plant acacia and eucalyptus. There are about uh, 2, million, uh, 2 million plus hectares in Indonesia that are planted uh, specially for pulp and paper uh, business. These wood crops um, are planted for, especially for this pulp and paper because um, the demand for pulp and paper regulation all over the world is getting very tight. So we have to know the, uh, the chain of the origin of the, uh, of the wood because now mixed hard wood from the secondary forest uh, cannot be processed as a pulp and paper to be uh, marketed internationally. So if I look at the uh, sourcing of the wood, like some for pulp and paper industry, and uh, some uh, to take the latex uh, for tire uh, 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 manufacturing and some for food manufacturing is the agroforestry, which is mainly the in the crop. So uh, to manage the value chain, of course, uh, we have to uh, connect with these uh, 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 big players of this um, industry. There are two uh, uh, big pulp and paper uh, businesses, industry manufacturing, which are mostly in, they are, both of them are in Sumatra, in Rio. So if we have, we plan, for instance, uh, uh, acacia and eucalyptus in Kalimantan, so we have to manage uh, how to transport efficiently to uh, this area of uh, pulp and paper. But for tire uh, industry, it's a bit easier because uh, the latex uh, can be processed within uh, the area of the forestry, near the area of the forestry. Then after uh, some process, then uh, it can be uh, uh, sold to a tire business. So if I look at the total, the national, um, uh, planning for this uh, business in, in industrial forestry, there are some, uh, there are several lines which is uh, different uh, value chain for pulp and paper business and also for the food uh, business is to are totally uh, different. But uh, this is interesting because uh, for instance, a truck, uh, transporting wood from one uh, side to the factory 
on the way back they can transport a uh, food crop to the uh, original of that truck so managing this uh, creative uh, logistic is one of the challenges to uh, as a key of efficiency uh, mr ajay singh mr ajay singh Yeah, I, I muted myself. Uh, well, it's great to hear you from Indonesia. I had two comments. One is that I've been using a lot of Indonesian coconuts. Are you in the coconut business? We are importing yes. them into Thailand, green coconuts. But we do run into a lot of quality problems every time we uh, get hold of the coconuts from Indonesia. And currently, of course, there's a lot of transportation problem of using barges to get on. Uh, to a ship uh, on to Thailand. Uh, the second is that there's a big demand for uh, forestry uh, stuff for uh, Middle East, especially for Dubai as well as for uh, Saudi Arabia. That these are young trees, about six, seven feet. I, 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 is there an export from Indonesia of these trees? Okay, Mr. Singh. Uh, uh, two a, uh, area. One is the uh, coconut uh, to be exported. Yes, I agree with you that uh, quality is one of the challenges to be maintained by the smallholders to export uh, the coconut. Because most of the uh, coconut players in this industry are smallholders. 95% are smallholders. We just starting uh, developing this uh, coconut uh, plantation uh, industrial site, but uh, we, we can only get the yield next uh, three, four years. We just started uh, last year. Most of the corporation just started recently. So once the corporation have a standard of uh, quality, I think it will increase the, uh, the quality of export. However, now the smallholders also being trained by the corporation to increase the quality of the product. Because some of these uh, products, actually, the problem are the packaging. If they don't do the packaging well, then uh, when they arrive at destination country, it can, cannot uh, retain the quality. And secondly, regarding the seedling, uh, six to seven feet uh, to be exported to Middle East. Uh, unfortunately, our government is not yet allowed a uh, corporation to export at the seedling because the local demand is still not yet fulfilled. Do, uh, am I answering your question? Yeah, thanks. You are, but I was just giving an opportunity because there's a $2 billion opportunity in Saudi Arabia for seedlings. China, Thailand is uh, quite uh, aggressive in that. So I thought if Indonesia is also in the game, I could help in getting it exported there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so unfortunately, not yet allowed. But now we are developing the tissue culture uh, nursery. Hopefully, uh, if this uh, project successful, then we can export uh, the seedling. Okay, great. So we'll be in touch. And also there's biodegradable uh, wood, uh, which is used for chips and plantations for, uh, you know, powering uh, various, uh, 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 the, heat, the, the, uh, the boilers, etc. Uh, do you have that kind of wood? These are byproducts of sawmills, etc. Yes, uh, for sawmill, yes, we have. Um, currently, some licenses are issued to be exported because um, to get exported of of this uh, wood is also uh, another challenge. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Singh. There's a, there's a question from Darshan Ganguly, can you please share a little more details <clears throat> on stevia production and processing? This is now a high growth cash crop of the cocoa. Okay. Uh, my, uh, the company that uh, I manage are uh, developing uh, stevia plantation since 2016. We got the seedling uh, from uh, Malaysia. Um, currently, we 
produce this uh, uh, this uh, stevia plantation in uh, one area in Cent in West Java. However, um, until now we haven't got the technology to process the stevia to omit the bitterness. So currently we still uh, uh, do the extraction of the stevia uh, for a domestic market. But we still have, uh, haven't been able to get the quality with this uh, similar taste like uh, uh, a sugar, normal sugar. So uh, I see if I see the prospect of the stevia business, this is a very uh, growing uh, business uh, worldwide. The total industry, uh, industry uh, uh, sites worldwide is about 600 million US, not, not so big, because this is a, a starting developing uh, business. One of the biggest players worldwide is uh, Pure Circle. Uh, we have some communication with Pure Circle and the sourcing from uh, China and other part of the world. And uh, there are some other players also in US and in Canada, but I agree that uh, especially Indonesia need uh, a stevia to reduce uh, uh, one is importation of sugar and secondly is to solve the help to solve the problem of the diabetes because uh, one third of the community in Indonesia uh, have problem with diabetes and related diseases so stevia is one of the key to uh, to solve this problem so that uh, to have a healthy uh, society to replace replace the uh, 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 sugar. However, we need still uh, to develop this one is the uh, crop uh, itself and also the technology to process the stevia. Uh, now, Dr. Malini Shankar, she is the one, she was awarded this year the AAA uh, Kartika. Dr. Malini Shankar from India. Uh, you go thank ahead. Thank you. Hi. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you. Kartika, wonderful uh, uh, presentation on agroforestry. My question is Has there been any assessment of uh, the risk with respect to pests in ag agroforestry? Pest. Pest, okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, there are some, uh, there are several studies uh, about the pest in agroforestry. Uh, in this partnership with academic and government, because government also have some research center that are monitoring the pests. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is not easy because um, the main crops, which is the wood crop, is mm -hmm. also facing uh, some challenges with the pests. And mm -hmm. different pests can be also, uh, you know, uh, uh, facing for the agroforestry. For instance, uh, for stevia. We mm -hmm. have uh, so far uh, identified uh, 18 pests that uh, attack our stevia plantation. Mm. And uh, this pest actually is not easy to eliminate because mm. we have to do uh, organically because we cannot do the uh, chemical uh, pesticide mm. in order to get the, you know, because the cycle of the stevia is very short, it's only three months. So if we put a chemical uh, pesticide, then uh, you know the last two months of uh, before harvesting, we cannot put any chemical uh, to this uh, uh, pesticide to the plantation. Mm. But that is for stevia. What about other crops? Has there been a pest problem with other crops? Yes, uh, even like uh, for soybean, for instance, we also uh, facing some a problem with the uh, with the pesticide. Mm. Mm. That's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, Thank it's you. very a uh, challenge. Mm. Thank you. Uh, the question is, what are the crops you are recommending in agroforestry, and how do you manage sustainability? What do you recommend in agroforestry crops? Okay. Uh, there are two kinds of uh, uh, agroforestry crops. One is the short cycle crops. This is like uh, corn and then uh, soybean, 
uh, stevia is a, a short uh, short term crop and the, uh, the other crops is the uh, long term uh, crop like cocoa coffee and then some spices like vanilla um, if i look at the cash flow side currently we we use the short cycle crops to generate cash flow to fund for the long term crops but if we look at the yield the long term crop like uh, cocoa and uh, coffee for instance uh, is very feasible because the, uh, the price of these uh, two crops uh, is not fluctuate very big so it depends on the condition of the uh, uh, company if it is uh, for cash flow side then we better have the short cycle crops but if for uh, the long term uh, business sustainability um, long cycle crops like uh, coffee cocoa uh, and the spices are recommended there's a question from rajan uh, he's saying it is there any study on urban farming uh, similar to terrace garden this will be a matter of interest in thickly populated cities like jakarta and mumbai Yes, uh, urban farming is not my field, but I uh, see some urban fa farming, like in Singapore. Uh, one of my friend um, developing urban fa uh, farming. Actually, he uh, he has some business in India as well, and uh, he developed uh, this urban farming for Singapore, and then uh, he may expand to Jakarta. Uh, to have this uh, urban farming, but if I see uh, this urban farming in Jakarta, some has been developed uh, for this community, uh, especially for those who are uh, forced to move from the riverside uh, to the apartment that are uh, provided by government. So they put this urban farming like vertical uh, garden in this uh, apartment site. So that they can have self-sufficient for the people in this uh, apartment area, and also they also sell this uh, uh, hydroponics uh, uh, vegetables in the commercial market. Michael would like to ask a question. Michael? Uh, his question was, uh, do you think agroforestry practice can reduce the dependency of farmers on primary agricultural products? How is this can be done effectively? Uh, sorry? Can be think agroforestry practice can reduce the dependency of farmers on primary agricultural products? Okay. Uh, to reduce uh, dependency of farmers, uh, I, I don't think um, it can be directly reflected to reduce dependency. Because, uh, for instance, uh, the farmers normally uh, planting their area is outside the forestry area. So uh, they can uh, plant with a different uh, license uh, to work for. And uh, which is agroforestry is in the uh, uh, industrial forestry area that not uh, for ordinary farmers. Jagannath, I'll unmute you. You can ask the question yourself. Jagannath? Yeah. Hello, ma'am. Jagannath here. Uh, I'm a project in this train. No, we can't hear you. Jagannath, your voice is. Uh, just a minute. Uh, okay. Uh, I think the voice is not clear. He says, I am a trained uh, phytochemist working in extraction industry for past 12 years. I connect with right process guys for your stevia bitterness problem. You say he can help you on that. Chagannath, is your voice okay? Hello? Uh, yeah, I'm now. Okay. So, uh, I think you can't hear the voice. Because, uh, yeah, I can't hear. I see it here. So, anybody has uh, any further questions for Kartya Samuel? Yes, Samuel, go ahead. 
Um, you did mention that uh, you all don't use pesticides, but do you all use chemical fertilizers in your uh, uh, plantations? Yes, um, chemical plantation like NPK. NPK is uh, widely uh, commonly used in the plantation. Uh, okay. However, for the stevia, we uh, use this organic organic fertilizer, which is a uh, cow dung paste. Because okay. if we it will depend on the NPK, the soil mm -hmm. will become uh, quite hard and uh, you know uh, is very costly to recover. Okay, uh, maybe we will connect offline because we do have an organic solution where you apply uh, uh, 10 kgs per hectare and mm -hmm. it is 100% organic and you don't need to use any pesticides and to manage insects we actually don't kill insects but repel insects. We are already mm -hmm. working with companies like Triputra in Indonesia. Oh. Very good. So possibly I will connect with you offline and uh, sure. uh, I will give you some information on that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, Kartika, thank you very much for a very informative session. We have uh,